so for people that don't know, uh, Bernard's videos are like Dr. House on on cocaine or something. It's it's the instead of having all the drama around where there's like romances and things like that, Bernard's videos are like uh, a woman did this and this is what happened to her brain or to her liver or to her whatever. And then he goes through and describes the medical case for what happens. So it is a whipsaw like roller coaster of emotions for what's happening because oftentimes he describes it in a way where you're like, I probably wouldn't do that, but whoa, it'd be bad if it happened to me. And he ended up uh, not only building a U.S. audience, but also a Chinese audience. And he just recently, no, not just recently, way before the curve, put out a video on coronavirus and about what it does to your lungs. And it was one of those things that like really woke me awake. Yeah, I've been lucky because uh, back in 2017, there was a person, he was a resident uh, I think in uh, Guangzhou province or Guangzhou, China. And so he um, he was translating my videos and posting it to Chinese social media with subtitles. So it would be English, like English words with Chinese on top. And so the people who uh, wanted to listen, they could learn some English from it by both listening to what I'm saying and also reading and correlating with the Chinese characters. And so he had asked my permission to repost it at the time. And I thought, no, um, I, I like I don't know what happens on Chinese social media because you know they don't have Facebook, they don't have Google, uh, they don't have Twitter and that kind of stuff. So then I, I looked a little bit further and I'm like, well, this guy was really asking for forgiveness because he had already done all of the translating and posting. <laughs> and so I, I saw that and I'm like, okay. And so I told him, I said, sure, uh, you can, but you you do have to make a, a chubby emu channel. You can't put it under your name, David Lai right? Because I'm not David Lai. And so he agreed. And what, what ended up happening, and that was in 2018, is that this team exploded into like a group of, I think, like at least 15 or 20 people. And so what ended up turning out is that I hopped in a, in a WeChat with them. And it turns out that they were all, you know, doctors and scientists all throughout China, and they were interested. They like they were at the you university. You created your level. own gravity well uh, before you even got there. Of people that would the type of person that would want to translate your videos and make them available is the type of person that's like you. He just not making those videos, but he's in another location. You created a place where people could congregate. That's a gravity well. Yeah, it was interesting. So I, I think he's now a full attending physician, but he didn't see at like huge amounts of coronavirus because he's in the south part of China. And so when the coronavirus hit, I remember I had went uh, back to Illinois for the Chinese New Year. And like, you know, we had all these announcements, oh, coronavirus. And, you know, people people were still joking about it at the time. Um, they're still joking about it, but it's a little bit different now than it was back then. And so he had told me, he said, yeah, um, Wuhan is probably going to get locked down. And I think they, they had the suspicions of it because it seemed like it was pretty severe. And so I said, I'm like, do we have anybody on the team for, who's from Wuhan? And so they had a couple people from the province that Wuhan is in. And then what happened was they were like, yeah, we know a bunch of the, uh, we know some pathologists and radiologists and uh, critical care doctors that are in the Jinyan 10 hospital. And so I thought, okay, uh, can we get in touch? And so we were able to get on with them and talk about what was going on as it started to get crazy. And so they were starting to, they were able to pull some of the cases from the database to say like, you know, these are some pretty severe cases. Um, and they said, you know, as long as we're not giving out the patient information, it's fine, but this is the message that we want to get out. And so for me at the time, it, it was hard to get it out right in January. So I ended up, I think, releasing it at near the end of February. And that was as the news was starting to get big here. In America, I mean, it didn't really get huge until probably, what, late March? So we had like a whole month worth so of- when you around know. did you start working on this video with those guys? Uh, so that started uh, January 23rd. So it was probably like a month uh, before it was posted. And- uh, what happened when you posted that video? How did people respond to it? Uh, it was good at first. So um, things kind of wax and wane on YouTube. And so for probably the last year, it, it's a lot different now than it was two years ago. 
uh, which is to be expected when you think of this kind of medium. So at that at that point, a lot of people were wondering, you know, what like why is this a serious thing? Like what what is this virus doing? And are people like should they should we really be taking it seriously? Like is it just the flu? And so uh, the answer is no. It's not just the flu, um, but also you shouldn't be like like you should be alert, but you shouldn't be freaking out about it. You should be alert. And, you know, if you don't need to go somewhere and you don't need to, you know, get up close to somebody, you probably shouldn't. And that holds held true back then. And it definitely holds true now. <laughs> <laughs>